John Reddick is a singer, he's a songwriter, and he's a worship leader. But his desire to make music goes much deeper than making a living or becoming a household name. For this Memphis, Tennessee, born and bred preacher's kid, music is a spiritual opportunity to express and reflect love for all of mankind. So sitting down with the newly signed Goatee Records artist during a songwriter's retreat in Aspen, Colorado, Reddick addresses much more than music industry shop talk in a dialogue about how worship through song inspires unity, even in the midst of great diversity. This is an especially poignant features on film, and I'm your host, Andrew Greer. Okay, so we are at Songwriters Retreat here in Aspen, mm -hmm. Colorado. Uh, beautiful location, of course, but you come from originally, we live in Nashville in Tennessee, right. but you come yeah. from Tennessee, from Memphis. Mm -hmm. And I hear that you were the son of a preacher man <laughs> and the son of a piano player, right? Yeah, church yeah, pianist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what yeah. was the, I, I assume music was a part of your very first experience growing up. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's always been there. My mom is a songwriter also, and my dad loves to play piano. He loves to play hymns. Okay. So, I mean, his way of meditating is to just go through the hymnal and just, you know. And oh. so uh, it's music has always been there. It's, Was music always like a connection to God in that then? Since music came from the church, was that mm -hmm. an immediate connection to God for you, or was it just a connection to music, you know? Well, both, because, I mean... My dad was a pastor, so it was also that connection with God. It was the way I heard him and listened to him and things like that. But it, they came uh, so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> but <Was> they, it? <laughs> it doesn't look like it was that long ago. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but um, no, so it, they came around the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, where did music first embed itself? in you? Where was it like, music is not just something I'm experiencing from my mom, my dad, but it's something that is a natural expression for me. Oh man, I, I had my own band, but they were all me. <laughs> <laughs> I like, because I didn't, I mean, I was my, I was four years older than my sister. So, okay, okay, okay. so earlier at an earlier age, I would just, you know, I just explored with instruments uh -huh. and things like that, or make up instruments uh -huh. and just all these sounds and different things like that. So I was just really excited about types of music mm -hmm. and, um, but I always heard it, so, and I sung in the choir, mm -hmm. you know, and and my sister sung, my, mm -hmm. you know, my mom sang mm -hmm. and played. So, Memphis is a place that is known historically for its racial divide. Was that something that you experienced even still growing up? Even though, we're, you know, you didn't grow up in the in the civil rights era and the era where we think of historically Memphis having some of that real strife and tension. Um, from racial divides, but was that a part of your growing up experience too, even in church, outside the church? Well, interestingly enough, I usually, whenever, wherever we were, it was, mm -hmm. it was predominantly black, mm -hmm. African-American, so um, I didn't really experience a lot of the divide. I just, it was there, I just didn't recognize it. Mm -hmm. And so my parents divorced when I was like 10, and okay. so we moved to Birmingham, okay. and that was my first experience with like seeing a rebel flag and, and, mm. and something happened to my sister at her elementary school when she was five. It was just- To her? Yeah, to her. And so it was, it, it, that's when I started realizing, you know, the divide, how strong the divide was. And we were in Birmingham also. So that, you know, that spoke a lot of different things because I knew the history of Birmingham as a, as a sixth grader um, mm. or a lot of that history. Um, but in Memphis at first, I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. After that, going back to it, being a teenager, you started noticing all the different things mm -hmm. and how racism plays itself out. We're more perceptive the older we get, uh, for better or for worse, we're more perceptive. I have cousins who, have, um, who are Caucasian and have two biological sons and then mm -hmm. adopted a little girl from Ethiopia about 10 years ago mm -hmm. who's as much part of her family as her biological children. Right. Um, but I remember her brothers who were only two and three when she was adopted. So they all grew up kind of together. When they first really even, they, they, they did not see a difference right. at first. Right. Isn't that interesting? And do you remember the first time that, and th this is true for all of us in all of our stories, there is a moment where we do realize that we are different. Mm -hmm. even though we, I believe we're all the same, you know, creating mm -hmm. God's image, human, all that stuff. But we start to see our differences and then experience them. Do you remember the first time that you were like, huh? I don't, I don't think it was a realization. Well, 
I don't remember the first time. What I do remember is I remember my parents always, they were just really good at instilling in us the beauty of our differences. Okay. And so we just, we knew at an early age, not only that we were different, but we saw the value in the differences that we had so, mm-hmm. and the beauty and, and the strength and, you know, what mm-hmm. we have. So for us, it was all, black history was always something that was taught to us and mm-hmm. because we wouldn't always get into the schools or things like that. Sure. So, you know, sure. so they, so they were just really good at making sure that we understood, you know, the beauty that was there already. Um, There's a quote from your bio, actually, throughout his writing career, talking about songwriting career and talking about you. He's intentionally (laughs) composed, (laughs) this is you, he's intentionally composed lyrics that speak about redemption and hope in a way that impacts cross-cultural narratives of a generation hungry for healing. Mm. To me, that says that you have, you are indicating that music uh, can be one of the main healing devices for cross-cultural conversations. Is that true? And how have you experienced or have you begun to invest in music that can potentially reconcile? Yeah, I think music in itself, I mean, we've seen lots of songs that bring people together, mm-hmm. not because they're saying something that says, let's come together. But It's not just, political by right, nature it's not, or, no, no, yeah. It's just, it's just uh, something that everybody gets to relate to. Uh, um, it's human. It's human, there you go. I think what we get the opportunity to do in worship is not only do we have this vehicle of music that like gathers people together in these tones and frequencies and things, but we also get this opportunity to be worshiping, which is basically laying down everything that we are and have mm-hmm. in order to like submit ourselves. Once we do that, once you lay that, all that down, the, the walls are gone. <laughs> like yeah. For that moment, the walls are gone because you realize, wait, I've, I've, I'm laying down my pride. I'm laying down my fears. I'm laying down all these different things that seem to divide us when we're not worshiping. So I think uh, the privilege that we get is worship, worshiping a God who loves us all. It just, it breaks down so many different things naturally without having to say anything. You're talking about real freedom. I mean, that's what, and, and everyone is searching for freedom in some manner. Mm. It may be a freedom from si- some kind of cycle of addiction. It may be freedom from a certain socioeconomic class where you can't pay your bills. Yeah. It may be a freedom from uh, oppression that's based on race or gender or whatever. And so everyone's looking for freedom. It's interesting what you're saying is that to begin to tap into true freedom, which I believe is a spiritually connected thing mm-hmm. that can't be totally achieved just in the here and now. It has to be connected to the kingdom of God, greater purposes that worship through music mm-hmm. could be one of the greatest tools that we have to really unleash freedom within our hearts and our minds or to allow God to unleash freedom. Yeah, I believe so. I think it's something that he knew what he was doing when he talked about us yeah, doing it. Yeah. And we're starting to realize it, you know, like uh-huh. we're just now catching up and realizing <laughs> all the things that really happened in worship. I mean, yeah. And will we ever fully catch up? I mean, in the sense right. of God must be, the more I look around the world, the more I get to see different parts of the world that I've never experienced. And certainly some that I don't understand because it's not part of my life experience specifically. True. The more I keep thinking he must be huge, <laughs> you know? He must yeah. be huge. And not only that, but he must be really beautiful. Mm. It must be truly, be, God must be truly beautiful yeah. to for us to be created in his likeness and for you and me to both be created in his likeness and yet be so unique yeah. and so uniquely different. That's intricate. <laughs> That's an intricate God who can do some amazing things. Yeah. Mm. If, if you had one, you know, music for you as mm. John Reddick. You know, it's kind of a new thing as far as the the artist-driven John, okay? You know, where your face and your name's on right. everything, not just on the credits or whatever, right. um, or not just at the local church, et cetera. If you had one, if you could kind of siphon it down to one goal with your music, one opportunity that you would like your music to afford yourself or others, what would that be? Oh, man to bring us closer to each other and bring us closer to God. Just bring us closer. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing. And I think in bringing us closer, it does both. Reconciling us to one another and reconciling Mm -hmm. us to God. Mm -hmm. Like, if it doesn't draw us closer to God, I wanna just keep going until I understand what he's wanting to do Mm -hmm. in order to make that happen. They 
days may be darkest, but your light is greater. You light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, you're rising higher with power to save, with power to save. Oh 